Hey guys, Crazy here. So first off, I wanted to say a big thanks to all of you that watched my uh, TF2 server tutorial video. I never expected that video to be that popular, but I'm really glad that it did because I really enjoyed making that video. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install plugins on your server. Now I'm just going to go over the very basics, just setting up uh, source mod on your server. Um, so we will need two things here. We will need uh, metamod and source mod as well. So if you go to uh, sourcemm.net, I'll leave a link in the description as well. And click on downloads and then windows. Then just choose one of these. I'll just right click and uh, save as because my download folder is spammed with files. So just save it on my desktop. Just a lot easier. And then I will go to uh, sourcemod.net. Go to uh, stable builds. Do not choose uh, dev builds because these are unstable and buggy as fuck. So just go to stable builds and then uh, choose Windows here. Just save as. It doesn't really matter. I'm just doing this so you cannot... S because my app, uh, because my download folder is very messy. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, just save this on your desktop anyway. So like that. All right. So once you've done that, you need to head over to your TF2 folder here in your TF2 server folder from the last video. Um, then go into uh, TF. Then in here, you need to create um, one folder called add-ons. Then uh, open up these two files with your favorite archiver. I'm just using uh, I'm just using 7-zip. Well, for some reason I cannot open this like that. That's pretty weird. I'm just gonna open it one by one then. Um, so yeah, go into your add-ons folder. Oh well, it's probably easier if we do it like this. Doesn't really matter. Um, just install uh, Metamod Source. Drag that in like that. And then drag these two folders in as well. Like that. Um, what it has created now is uh, a source mod folder inside CFG. You can actually see in here, source mod. Here, source mod to CFG, you can use that to configure how source mod behaves. Because source mod comes with a lot of uh, default plugins. Um, such as banning and stuff like that. Um, and MetaMod Source is basically just what uh, Source Mod is based on, so you don't really need to mess around with that. Alright, so um, in uh, add ons Source Mod, in here you can see you have a lot of folders. Uh, you have a plugins folder. This is where you put in all of your plugins. Uh, plugins uses the file extension XMX. So you can just go into Allied Modders and uh, download plugins and just put them in here. Then you have the configs folder. This is where you uh, would put all the, uh, or most of the configurations of your plugins. They will be located in here. Um, then you have the translations. Here you can actually uh, translate or uh, see um, already existing translations of plugins. Uh, not every plugin uses translations. They some plugins have translations built in, so you cannot modify these. But you can modify most of the translations of the plugins inside the translations folder. And then you have the scripting folder. This is just a source code of many of the plugins. So uh, if you want to see how plugins are uh, made, you can go ahead and look in here. You also have a, a compile and spcomp program. These two, you will use those to compile uh, plugins. So you can modify them and simply compile them in here. Then uh, extensions, this is some different kind of uh, plugins, I guess. You can, uh, or some uh, plugins needs extensions because they are based on them and stuff. Uh, for example, there's an extension called uh, Steam Tools. You can use this to uh, modify a lot of stuff on your game server. Uh, I'll show that in a future video. Um, but some things are quite confusing because not all of the um, configs will be stored in this folder. Some of the configs actually go into CFG and source mod. 
and then it will probably be something like plugin dot rtd for example roll the dice has uh, its own config file inside uh, cfg source mod and not the configs folder that you saw earlier it's a little bit confusing but you'll uh, you'll get used to that basically um, and so uh, now you can uh, just go ahead into add-ons source mod and configs you can uh, at admins, for example, I'm just going to show you that real quick. Um, oh yeah, well that just switched my desktop. It's quite annoying, actually. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so admins to CFG. Uh, here you put in all your admins. So for example, I can uh, go ahead and look up my uh, Steam ID because I, for some reason, don't have that in my head, obviously. Um, so Steam community dot com slash profiles yeah this is my steam profile i don't care if you add me as friend i'll probably just ignore it i don't know i, don't, I have too many friends so uh but yeah this is uh, how you add admins so you can just go ahead and type in uh some time crazy like this um, then the first thing here is also this is how um, the server will know that it's actually you joining and not someone else. It's just how it will authenticate that you are actually the real person. So set all to Steam. Um, you can also uh, use IP based authentication. This will uh, make sure that you can only be admin from one specific IP address. Uh, and then name based authentication, I think that's when you have your uh, Steam name set to something and then you're admin. I'm not sure. I never use it. I always use the Steam one. Uh, then you have identity. This is the Steam uh, ID of the user. So I'll just put in my ID here. Uh, then the flags. Um, to find all the flags, uh, just go to, uh, I think you can go into admin levels here. This is the very uh, basic ones. For example, we have reserved slots, uh, which is the A flag, a generic, which is generic admins. So you can just uh, read what the different flags does, and you would just put them in here. I don't think order matters. So you can basically just do this if you like, but I always make them in order. Um, and if you're going to be owner of the server, just put in the C flag. This will make you. Uh, this will give you permission to everything on the server. As you can see down here, root. And you can also make custom ones. I'm not going into details about custom ones, but uh, you can use these to create some uh, uh, permission groups and assign a uh, flag for it and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, but just save this file now and you should have yourself admin. Now you also have, have admin groups. Um, so as you can see here, we can create our own groups. Example, here's an example of full admins. You can put in um, overrides. For example, I can say that, let's say that I have CCC installed on my server, which is custom chat colors. So this is the command for that. Now I can choose if this uh, group is allowed to use this command um, like that. So then I can save this. And then full admins, the group full admins have access to CCC. So then I can go into my uh, admins for CFG. I can add group here. And then I can say um, full admins like that. And then he will, uh, the player will actually have all the permissions of full admins now. So it, he will also have all these flags, even though you only specific specify like one of them here so just keep that in mind that uh he will have this this flag right here compared to the flags in the group now if you want to install custom plugins you can just go ahead um and search on google on the plugin that's the easiest way so let's say i want to install um roll the dice so I'll just say RTD allied mutters like that. Just wait for that. Then I will actually uh, take a uh, fill 25s updated RTD because this has more effects than the old one. It's pretty cool. Um, then scroll down here 
actually it's always a good idea to read the installation notes because this will tell you everything you need to do. Sample, this plugin is based on uh, TF2 attributes. But if you actually look at the old plugin, just go ahead and look at that, you can see install SDK hooks. Now, you don't need to do that because SDK hooks is already installed. I believe that's an extension. As you can see, SDK hooks right there. So just make sure that you don't already have it because you're not going to spend time installing something you already have on your server. Um, but yeah, um, just go ahead and install TF2 attributes like that. Um, and also read the installation instructions here because you need to uh, get the game data as well. As you can see right here, just going to save as, I believe you should place that in uh, TF2 server, TF2, add on source mod and game data, like that. We can actually just read the installation instructions here, because I always forget this stuff here, you can see um, in source mod game data, yeah, because there's two game data folders, I believe, so it's quite confusing. Um, just go ahead and click on get plugin. And then you would place this inside of the plugins folder. Now you can also click on get source if you want to uh, get the source as well. It doesn't really matter. It's not required, but if you do want to get the source, just place that in scripting as well if you want to. And also the include file, you would put that in scripting, include, just save that right there. All right, now we have tier two attributes installed. Actually. Did we miss something? Nope, it's fine. Uh, then you need to download uh, this zip here. Uh, sometimes the download is down here, but sometimes they provide some custom links like that. Um, I'm just gonna put that on my desktop. All right, just gonna look at this file here. Gonna open it with 7-zip. Um, and then just go ahead and put all these files in here. Again, the scripting folder is not uh, important, but it's always a good idea to drag it in. So if you need it, you have it. And it also comes with a translations uh, file, so you can change the uh, translation if you want to change it to something fancy. Um, now you're basically done. Uh, he also says that you can install Updater, which is a nice plugin that will keep your plugins updated. But I'm not, I'm not gonna go over that right now. Um, then I recommend that you just restart the server, but you can say SM plugins load RTD in the console and it will search for rtd.smx. Uh, and if it found the plugin, it will load it. But it's generally a bad th idea because if it tries to reload RTD but it hasn't loaded TF2 attributes, it will fail to load RTD. So it's if you restart your server, it will load it correctly. So um, yeah, I think this covers the basics of plugins. Um, I think I hope you get the idea um, of getting plugins on your server. Um, if you thought that this video was helpful please uh, feel free to leave a comment down below and like the video also subscribe to stay updated with the latest videos and i will see you in the next one cheers